So in this video, we will discuss about the directory structure of uh, React Native application that is created with the help of Expo CLI. And uh, we will build a very small and basic application uh, like this, displaying some text, having a button over here, showing an alert, passing some values to the, to the method. And uh, we will be writing some code. We will be writing some styles over here and we will discuss about the component writing our own event handler over here so that's all about uh, this video and at the end of this video we will be able to write our own event we will be able to style our application so this is our react native project developed or created with the help of react native cli so i can open this project in any editor so most commonly our famous editor is VS Code. So let's discuss the directory structure of this React Native project developed or created based on Expo. So we have an Expo folder over here which actually uses to manage or run the Expo project. We have X, Expo shared directory. We don't need to worry about these Expo directories. So these are the actually assets which has an icon and splash screen. So splash screen that we see uh, on uh, our device while uh, the project was loading. So this is a splash screen. This is an icon which is actually used for the app when we see the app in the list of recently uh, launched apps. So we, if we want to update, we can change and update from here. So this is a known modules uh, folder which is actually quite big if I go and see and look into the properties this is the folder which are actually containing all the dependencies we don't manually write anything we don't need to copy anything remove anything inside this uh, node modules until and unless it's very much necessary so this is the node modules which is actually uh, use this is a web build which actually we use to build our uh, web project or we actually run this on a web this is the ignore git ignore uh, file so those who have already idea of uh, what git is and what is git ignore they actually can see that git ignore is a file that actually tells that when you are pushing your code on a github it is a list of files and directories which should not be pushed on your uh, uh, as a git repository on your github or any github or git related uh, uh, platforms it can be bitbucket or it can be any other uh, cloud based service supporting uh, git repositories so you see that node modules is actually the thing that should not be published because node module is very much related to a specific project so whenever we pull some project or download any react native or react project uh, we need to run npm install so that it will install all the node modules required for that project so you actually don't push the node modules on git and you don't actually download node modules so these are also some other directories which should not be pushed when your code is published on your git repository so app.js is actually our file and this is the place where we actually write our code this is the entry point and uh, you see a message on our application over here open up app.js so this is the message which comes actually from here so i can actually change this this is my first react native app using expo CLI. So if I save this, it's refreshing and you see the output. So now uh, without uh, building JavaScript bundles again, uh, with, with the help of hot reloading, it actually updates the UI of your uh, application. Either you are testing your application on your physical device or on emulator. So whenever you change something, it will automatically update this. So let's move on to next files. So app.js uh, app.json actually contains the configurations uh, we don't need to worry about such as uh, expo name and slug name platform etc. 
and uh, babel you know the babel configuration are actually required for the jsx syntax for example n app.js this is a JS, jsx syntax which is actually used uh, very much in uh, react projects so package.json file actually is a place where all the dependencies and uh, the list of uh, dependencies and their version are specified so this is an uh, expo manage project so we have uh, expo version as you version 37 is the latest version right now and uh, you also need react you need react dom you need react native and react native web so these are the depend dependencies basic dependencies already installed on our basic uh, react uh, native project with the help of uh, expo cli you see that we also discussed that we can run our project with the help of expo start so expo start is actually the same as npm start so this is this script uh, start command is actually works with npm as well so it ultimately uses expo start and will run our project so this is all about the directory structure of uh, our application let's move on and uh, write some code in app.js so let's have a look at our very basic react native project and this is app.js containing a component and a styles so i'll start from the beginning uh, so as we discussed earlier that we will need react because without react react native cannot build their project we cannot do the development but it is also using react native specific component so let's like uh, let's if we see that view and text and a style sheet they are actually specific to react native components available although style sheet is not a component but it's helping us to styling our application but the view and the text they are actually used in our application to lay out our application and we see that this output so let's increase a bit little bit the font size of this uh, uh, this text so that you can see that uh, you see that styles can be added in a view like this uh, we can uh, also add a style over here with the with the help of style property and I can refer to the styles um, object of uh, style sheet or I can actually write inline style with the help of double curly braces so let's say font size to 30 so if i save this it's updating and the font size is increased so i can actually change that to let's say 20 so now you see a bigger font size and so you see whenever i save this uh, uh, with the help of uh, hot reloading it actually update on emulator if i'm connect if i have connected my device uh, my physical device i can also see the change over there so it actually does not build the bundle so this is our a uh, very basic default component so it actually need to export uh, one statement so at least it has a uh, one statement of default uh, export just like in react so that's why we discussed that react knowledge very basic react knowledge is required to start working with the react native but uh, you don't need to worry about it I can also explain it over here so so app is a function which is a component over here so this is a function based react component and every file whenever we are using react component we need to export uh, that component from that file so that app.js is containing an app component it's not necessary that uh, file name and the component name must match it's not required so uh, this is uh, app.js very basic or entry point of this application so I can move this uh, export statement at the end like this and this is a JavaScript function and it's a component 
I can also change this component to the class based components and that will require uh, a render function. So let's move on and uh, see that what will happen over here when we are actually returning this view. So view is actually using the style and with the help of style sheet it's actually creating an object of javascript so this is an object javascript object having key value pairs where container is the key which is used through this uh, this uh, this object which is styles uh, and it is created with the help of style sheet so styling our react application are done through the style property or the style prop and we can actually instead of uh, writing uh, our styles over here we can actually create a style sheet and uh, with the with the help of style sheet object i can use a key of style which is which i have created it's not definitely predefined so let's move this font size or styling of this text over here so i will create another entry over here so this is another uh, object of um, style having a key value pair so let's call it text this can be anything because this is user defined so i can actually say that the font if i press control spacebar i will get uh, with the help of intellisense the available uh, styles um, in uh, react native so it's 20 let's make it 24 and instead of doing this i can actually remove this from here and i can say that styles dot text so this is the text styling that i want to apply and use with this application so if i save this you can see the size has been increased so that's how actually you can work with the styles uh, it's a very uh, important that we keep the styles at one place so this is about styling your application let's look at this JSX so this actually this this is a, a function based component and returning a JSX uh, we can uh, see that it it, it, it's ha it has a view and uh, that view contains a text and how about if we have multiple views for example this is my first react app using expo cli i want to repeat this so when i add another view uh, parallel to 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 the view that i have uh, that is actually a problem over here that uh, a component can have only one root element so there is a possibility that if I want to uh, put this inside uh, a container like a root element so I can actually do like this that I can move this inside this view so I can have a view and I can actually use this view over here I let's say for example don't want to use styling that was for that and I can actually save this so that that's that's the way that we can actually use it so view actually used to contain something something uh, some elements uh, and we want to actually group that element in a view we view is something that is not visible but it is actually used for the styling let's say for example if i add some margins uh, let's say for example to 10 margins so these margins are actually added on this view and you can see the styling uh, uh, and the space has been added a bit so let's add 20 margins so we have a margins over here and similarly if i want to apply some styling over here so let's say for example style for this uh, inner view so let's say for example i'm adding padding to this so that you see that the padding has been added over here so if i repeat this so instead of having this uh, repeated styles definitely we actually 
create styles over here let's say for example i can call it uh, interview style and i can actually paste that and i will use that padding like this so i will use style dot interview and i will actually reuse that so that whenever i need to change i just change at one place let's suppose the padding was not good enough so i actually decrease padding so it will be applied on every view so that's how actually you keep the styles at one place and you re reuse and view is actually used for the styling so let's add another thing that is a button available in react native so it's not coming because my code just broke so this is the button and uh, i can add this button inside a view like this and i can say that i need to add a button so and the text or the title of the button would be let's say click me or tap me and uh, that can be a self closing tag as well so let's add this button so this is a click me button which is a default android button and for uh, uh, ios for the iphone uh, it will not have a blue border and uh, the button would be the typical uh native button uh, will look like on your iphone device so this is the button and you can have a text and this text will grow click me click me again so this is the button so depending on, upon the text size the size of this button is uh, grown we cannot directly apply styles on these buttons just like this if we want a custom buttons we actually need to create our own buttons let's say for example i want to have a uh, uh, a curve borders of a button i definitely need to create my own custom button i will uh, explain this later on in uh, our discussions that how we can do that but uh, for now i will just create this button over here let's add a even handler with uh, this button so on uh, uh, react for the web it actually uses uh, the events that are actually common in web but for react native uh, on click event is not available with the button instead it has an on press event and uh, uh, we have to use um, a react styling to uh, provide javascript code inside this curly braces so i can actually refer an event method over here directly i have multiple options over here to uh, to call this i can create an anonymous function over here an arrow function or i can actually go over here and then create a function so uh, this is a component and definitely this button belongs to this component and i need to create a event function over here inside this component although this is a function based component so it looks a bit strange that a function is having another function inside this function so uh, that's not a problem because it's a component and javascript itself is not actually purely object oriented it is a prototype based language and ultimately it uses function in the back end so let's create a function but then Let's say collect. So I will create a function. Uh, first, I will just tell you that we can create a simple pure vanilla JavaScript style functions as well. And I will actually alert. So alert was actually not directly available before uh, uh, in older versions. Uh, we actually need to do this alert dot alert like this. we can actually do that but alert is also directly available over here and i can write a message let's suppose hi there 
all right so uh, how do i call this function so that when this button is pressed uh, or, or when i tap this button this message is displayed in an alert box so i can actually call this function like this what will happen so if i save this and it will refresh and you see that as soon as this component is loaded this this method has been displayed because this is a call to javascript and whenever it was actually writing this code uh, on this uh, this screen it actually triggered that function directly and it actually called this function so uh, to wait for a user press we actually need to provide a reference instead of directly calling this function so when we put parentheses it means that we are actually calling that function so we actually need to provide a reference to that function and uh, it will be called when we actually tap or we press on this on this button so it's fresh refreshed so i tap on this so we see an alert and uh, this message over here i can also convert this into an arrow function so instead of having a vanilla javascript style functions so i can actually do that with the help of so i will create a let's say for example function name and i will tell this is an arrow function so nothing is going to change because this is a es6 standard and mostly used in uh, react react uses a lot react native also uses this so this is actually our arrow function and i actually converted this into an arrow function you see that this message is coming over here so that's how actually you can use alert you can use on press and then you can click on this and then this method will be triggered so that's how actually you uh, use events uh, on press and button so let me tell you a little bit more about this uh, uh, events and how we can use it in another way so what about if i want to pass something from this function let's say for example i want to send a message from here let's say for example button one is pressed just to identify that which button is pressed so i want to pass this uh, over here and i want to receive this uh, from the from the parameters let's say for example message and let's say message is i will concatenate using this string concatenation if i save this so now the problem is that without pressing this uh, button it will be triggered because this is the default behavior we just discussed uh, how i can actually prevent this uh, from triggering and i want to i want this button to wait for this on press button so i can actually bind this so with the help of binding it will actually bind this method and will not call this method so uh, if you see the parameters of binding so the first parameter is uh, which function is actually calling so this is the, uh, it takes bind method actually takes two parameters so the first parameter is uh, the function itself so this in case of this which means i can identify that uh, this is the function that is actually triggered and i can actually bind with this one and the second actually uh, is 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 an array of arguments it's it can be a single argument it can be an array of arguments so which means that if i want to pass this i can bind this method and i can send this as a parameter to this function now it will actually bind and will not actually trigger as soon as this app is loaded so it will wait for my on press and when on press it will actually trigger this function and it will actually pass this argument in this case it's one argument but it can be an a list of arguments it can be an array so it's actually uh, sending this button one is press string from here to there and then i am just concatenating and displaying in an alert so that's how actually you can bind this 
and it will be used when we are sending actually some parameters so so far we have seen that how we can create a react application how can we run this application how we uh, utilize the feature of hot reloading whenever i save this uh, this code and everything is updated over here how we can uh, write the button how we can use on press event handler how can we bind how we can actually associate some event functions and also some styles how we can write some styles we will dive deep in in these styles and we'll see that how some styles are available and how we can style our application so this is a very basic react application and uh, uh, with the with a single button and that actually shows an alert in next video we will discuss about react hooks which are also called states and how we can change the text let's say for example if i press a button so this text text is uh, updated right now we cannot actually change this uh, we are actually using the alert on this on press event